Hi Heloines! You may or may not know how to farm ninja parts, but I did lots of research and I believe I've actually found the most efficient way to farm them. Like all my videos, I will explain what the materials do and what they're used for, then I'll explain where to farm them. So if you feel like you know everything about ninja parts, feel free to check the links in the description for the timestamps. If you don't know me, I'm Nico and I really like trying to collect everything possible in Zelda games. So if you need help finding anything or doing things in Zelda games, I hope you consider subscribing or at least checking out the channel. First, some general things about dragon parts. You may already know that there are three dragons, Farosh, Dinral, and Nadra. Each dragon can drop four different parts. Fangs if you hit them in the mouth, horns if you hit them on the horn, claws if you hit them on the claw, and scales if you hit them anywhere on the body or face. And usually the moment you hit them, they'll fly back into the sky. Also keep in mind that you can only do this once, and in order to do it again, you would have to wait till the dragon respawns again. Speaking of spawning, Nadra usually spawns from the top of Mount Lanayru and travels down the Lanayru Promenade, turns the corner towards Rabia Plain, back to and through the Lanayru Bay, then goes back home into the sky. And Nadra won't be available to farm for parts until you free her from the malice on top of Mount Lanayru. So if you haven't done this, go to the top of Mount Lanayru, shoot the eyes of the malice, then shoot Nadra anywhere on its body for a scale. And the scale is used to open up the shrine on top of the mountain. For cooking, no matter which dragon, each part adds a specific amount of time to a dish. Each scale cooked adds 1 minute and 30 seconds to a dish, each claw cooked adds 3 minutes and 30 seconds, each fang adds 10 minutes and 30 seconds, and cooking a horn makes the dish last 30 minutes. That's the highest a buff can go for, making horns one of the most useful materials. Unless you're trying to collect them, the main reason you probably need nature parts would be to upgrade some gear. You need 2 horns for champions to an third upgrade. You need two scales for the snow boots fourth upgrade, one horn for the barbarian legs. For the fierce deity armor, you need one scale for the first upgrade, one claw for the second, one fang for the third, and one horn for the fourth. And the tunic of the wild is the same thing as the fierce deity armor, but instead you only need two of each part. So that's a total of five scales, three fangs, three claws, and six horns. And that's all I got for what the parts do. Now for farming Nadra parts. Like most people know, the best place to farm Nadra parts is by the Lanayru Road East Gate. But the biggest problem with this method is that when you shoot Nadra, Nadra parts will fly all the way down the promenade. So if you want to get the part, you'd have to travel all the way over there, probably defeat some enemies, climb up if it goes in the water, then head all the way back and repeat. That's the most annoying part. There is a chance for the parts to drop on the mountainside, but you'll never know. I found a way to make that happen. I'll explain first how to farm Nadra, then I'll talk about some problems you may come across. The best way to get the east gate is probably to go to the top of Mount Lanayru and wind bomb there. If you don't know how to wind bomb, you can check the card in the corner or the link in the description on my short video on how to do it. But if you're still having problems, you can travel to the shrine under the waterfall in the promenade, then just run there. And as a small note, there is a Lionel here if you don't know, so you probably want to get rid of it. And of course, if you need help fighting Lionels, check the card in the corner or the link in the description for my video explaining how to defeat them easily. The specific place I would stay is here on top of this little mountaintop. Place some wood here, sit until morning, and Nadra should appear from the top of Mount Lanayru. Now you do have to wait till Nadra gets close, which is the boring part. But as soon as Nadra creates an updraft, ride it and shoot whichever part you want to get. Each part will fall in one of these two places. On the cliff on your side of the promenade, or somewhere on that area on the other side of the promenade. 
then sit till morning, then repeat. Obviously, this is better than all the parts flying down the promenade, but also, since you're shooting Nadra, Nadra will fly away and you don't have to worry about getting frozen from Nadra's freeze attack thing. Also, this is faster since you're shooting her sooner than you normally would. And speaking of faster, to maximize your speed, after you shoot Nadra, as soon as the part flies off of Nadra, you can sit until morning. Naturally, you're going to want to see where it lands before sitting. But if you sit till morning, you can still see where it flies. You'll shave off a few seconds by doing this. Also very very important, you must wait until the part flies off of Nadra. If you shoot Nadra, then sit right away, the part will come off but will drop straight down. This sounds like a good idea, but for some reason, the part will disappear. The next thing you should do is wait before picking up the part. You may want to go get the part, then go back, but it will stay there until you leave the area or pick them up. So leave them there and farm whichever parts you want, then you can go get them all. I tried to see what the most amount of parts you can leave on the ground, but I stopped after 33. So if you're crazy enough to keep going until you get more than 30, then go pick them up, then continue. I did this with Farosh and I wind up having 39 being the most, so it might be the same for Nadra. First, having a good long range bow will help. The two best bows would be to use the Twilight Bow or the Bow of Light. They basically have infinite range. You can only get the bow of light by using a really long glitch which makes you start the game over, but when you start over you'll have almost any items you want including the bow of light. If you want to learn this, I biasly recommend Cleric or Limcube's video explaining how to do it. Links in the description. You can get the Twilight Bow by the Zelda Smash Amiibo. If you have the Amiibo, I have a video explaining how to basically choose which Amiibo drops you want. Check the card in the corner or the link in the description. The next best bow would be the Ancient Bow, which the book says it has a range of 50. The Ancient Bow can be bought from the Alcala Tech Lab. You'll need 50 Ancient Springs, 10 Ancient Gears, 1 Giant Core. And of course, you get Ancient Parts by defeating Guardians. And if you need help getting Giant Ancient Cores, I have a video on that too. Link. And the next best bows after that have a 40 range. That would be the Swallow Bow, Falcon Bow, Great Eagle Bow, Duplex Bow, and Phrenic Bow. The swallow bow can be found in the Rito village by hearth and also in the flight shooting range. There's a few chests in Hebra that have the falcon bow. Link receives the great eagle bow after defeating Wind Blake Ganon and you can get a new one also from hearth if you have a swallow bow, diamond and wood. Dupex bows can easily be found in Karusa Valley. Just go to the shrine and walk to the Yiga hideout and a foot soldier will surprise you. And a phrenic bow can be found in many treasures around Hyrule, but if you've got all the treasures, you can also get it from this book album just south of Hatino Tower. Every other bow, you just have to eyeball your shots. If nature doesn't show, it might happen. I don't know why. You can try a couple of things like saving and reloading, closing the game, reloading, or even leaving and fast traveling back to the shrine and then travel back to that spot. If it rains, you can drop down the mountain and drop wood under the gate. You can place a fire there. The gate will prevent the fire from going out. If it rains, what I would do is wait till Nadra gets close, shoot Nadra, then drop down to the gate. Again, I'm trying to save a few seconds by doing things while I'm waiting. I time myself and it takes about 1 minute and 40 seconds for each one. So that means it takes about 15 minutes to get 9 parts. I know it's not that many, but there is an easier way to multiply those parts so you can collect them faster. You basically transform any common material like wood into something else. Like a dragon part or a gardening part. But that's a whole other video that combines some glitches. Luckily, that's this video here. So check it out if you want to learn how to do it. And that's all I got for Ninja Parts. Hope you liked the video, subscribe if you want more Zelda content, and I'll see you next time.